Hi all, let's have a look at the amazing game 4 of this new series of the newly released Alpha Zero games. So game 4, Knight F3, Stockfish 8 playing E6. We go into English opening territory, Bishop B4, Queen C2 avoiding any structural damage issue. So after casting A3, Stockfish volunteers the Bishop, Queen takes D6, B4, we have E5 saying that this bishop is going to be not that useful perhaps on this diagonal at the moment. Bishop b2, knight bd7, e3, we have rook e8, d3, knight f8, bishop e2, a5. Now actually here alpha zero castles kingside, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, and then we have the move queen c2, h6 bishop c3 eyeing that a5 pawn trying to maybe open up and exchange off a pair of rooks to try and infiltrate on the queen side black just plays b6 here b5 which seems to give the c5 square however there's a slight price to pay if a knight maneuvers uh if one of the knights maneuver to c5 black has to be wary about d4 which could help liberate the bishop along this diagonal we see knight 6 to d7, rook d1, knight c5. Indeed, it is a bit of a target to d4. Bishop a1, bishop g6, pinning this pawn for the moment. The queen unpins, knight a4, bit of a nuisance. Queen a2, knight c5. But now d4, it seems as if Stockfish has compromised slightly, making this bishop a little bit more active than it was, indulging in this operation to entrench a knight on c5. So e takes d, to, knight takes d4, swings and roundabouts. Is that knight worth it to have opened up this potentially dangerous bishop? We have bishop e4. Black does have a good lockdown on the e4 square. But now alpha zero plays bishop f3. And now we have bishop takes f3 and g takes f3. Funny enough, when I was playing against the Budapest Gambit, I was often playing a system encouraging G takes, but I was castling queenside. I scored very, very well with it because there was coordination on the G file with a Fianchetto bishop. And here it does seem as though there's the same kind of mechanics that potentially there can be coordination on this G file against G7. Knight E6. On Knight takes F3, that seems rather tame in comparison. So for example, this position, it looks as though black should be absolutely fine. So this is a very exciting continuation. Knight f e6, king h2. Knight takes d4. Rook takes d4. Here, on knight g5, the knight can just be kicked back with f4. Uh, and this is not worth going into after knight c6, for example. There's rook g1, possible. And a lot of pressure can be built up quite rapidly on the G file. Now threatening mate, this is a, a nightmare now for black. This scenario with f5, rook f4. So the knight can't take because of queen g7 mate. And here, this is just absolutely winning this position. It will be absolutely crashing through. So black, yeah, these are some of the, the features black of this position. Though This variation demonstrates some of the features here that this G file can be a total nightmare. Knight takes d4, rook takes, king h7. We have check, provoking weaknesses really. Now g6, yes, it looks very, very scary already this position after g6. Rook f4 hitting f7. Queen e7, rook g1, rook g8. And now h4 is supported with the idea of trying to blast through h5, trying to do some damage. Black plays h5, so this is a critical position. Why is black committing to h5? Let's have a look at knight d7. There's h5, knight e5. It seems this is very strong for white in this position. After a4, for example, bishop c3 is possible. With ideas of c5, believe it or not, playing on the queen side seems a really powerful idea. Example, rook d8, d e8, c5, if takes takes here bishop takes 
and this is just a crushing position positioning uh, for example here e4 check this is a way of just hacking through and taking the queen at leisure this would just be absolutely uh, winning black doesn't want to allow queen h5 in this line this is absolutely winning let's look at this sequence again because this h5 is very very committal so I was fascinated why uh, in this line say knight d7 so let's look at this again and vary a little bit instead of rook d e8 if knight takes c4 just to rule this out rook f6 and then queen e4 because if it takes there's um, rook takes f7 winning a rook and then taking back the queen uh, so that's pretty pretty deadly and if yeah that's that's uh, pretty crushing so knight d7 doesn't seem to do too well um, and if we look at this again in the c5 line so I mentioned b takes in this line on c5 if d takes again bishop takes rook takes f7 queen takes g6 check is crashing through totally on the g file and also here uh, let's have a look at this line again bishop takes with uh, there's also the position here is so strong that actually white can even switch to the queen side structural damage on the queen side it's fairly fragmented if you look at this variation it's just terrible and this is a big advantage for white just structurally if nothing else the black pawns are going to be falling off at some point it's very very comfortable for white so there is evidence to suggest that h5 is virtually unplayable so we have actually i mean to to not play h5 it leads to big trouble so black played h5 now we have rook g5 with the big threat of just mate and one with rook takes. Uh, so just to put that on the board, just to throw it, rook takes h5 as a mate because of the bishop on this diagonal. So here we have the awkward looking king h6, but black is surely threatening knight e6. Are these rooks kind of misplaced? Has black got a tactical point here uh, that the rook shouldn't be there? And in fact, isn't this potentially quite dangerous for white's king if this rook's going to move then h4 would drop if that rook's not on this rank protecting h4 so is there trouble brewing here tactically are these a liability these attacking pieces well we have e4 alpha zero saying you know fork my rooks if you dare and stop fish dead fork the rooks with knight e6 now guess what was alpha zero's response here which is really really powerful if I give you five seconds to pause the video white to play okay it's a total lock-in of black's rooks after rook f6 very powerful exchange sack so this is taken if it isn't taken it's a disaster if it isn't taken because there's latent pressure now on g6 for example with e5 I'll show you for example knight g7 e5 and if here bang rook takes g6 and mate so that's huge pressure after knight g7 uh, in this line also if knight f5 would we'll just play queen takes f5 that's pinned so there's no there's no wiggling no wriggling <laughs> wiggling out of it here so the exchange sack's taken now the king can't step out as you might expect it just gets mated check and a mate so the king goes back in its box Pardon me. The king goes back in its box. And now just casually f4. So the exchange down, but have a look at this position. Guys, <laughs> have a look at this position. It's equal on pawns. Dead equal on pawns. But what are the prospects for the black rooks? This is a very in context evaluation, not just doing some sort of crude material account. Uh, evaluation but really taking into account the finesses of the position that the prospects of the rooks but there's also the prospect of white having a powerful strategic break and in fact that one strategic break can also be amplified believe it or not by an outrageous idea we don't normally see 
in the normal human games or even engine games that the f5 break can be made more effective if the king comes up over here to hit h5 yeah i know this is science fiction now so this is a pure exchange down usually we think of exchange sacrifices to at least have at least two pawns or at least one pawn for our, for our exchange stack with prospects we sometimes look dynamically the more dynamic of us uh, at least look at the trends upward trends but here it's just a pure exchange sack no pawns so let's see what happens rook a e8 queen d3 the queen can't leave f7 we have rook g7 if the queen leaves f7 it's a disaster because the bishop and rook coordinating here just winning the rook okay so the queen's tied to f7 we have rook g7 and now okay this pawn is protected now king g8 queen d4 i mean visually it looks crushing and visually it looks as though the rooks are useless yeah black's rooks king f8 bishop c3 rook g8 C calm this a4 just locking down the queen side rook d8 and now this remarkable idea that the f5 break can be given a lot more power the king is heading to h4 not just also sometimes protect sometimes in some cases it might be protecting g5 so the king actually plays to h3 <laughs> this is incredible this is the prospect so zero pawns but the prospect of a king journey to try and win one pawn for the exchange but knowing that the black rooks are just impotent they're not really doing anything in this position they're nullified uh, so we have rook d7 being played if queen d7 check the king just comes up to h4 outrageously rook e8 and then queen d5 went dominating the position here and then plays for the f5 break under great circumstances so we have rook d7 and now f5 here in fact it is actually possible to do this here g takes if uh, an alternative rook d8 because this commits some structural damage so let's say this situation with f takes there's rook takes check check takes and actually white ends up with a winning end game after f4 here f5 this is a totally winning end game scenario blacks in zugzwang it's good black doesn't have a spare move that was ruled out earlier with a4 there's no spare move for black either <laughs> otherwise white might be in zugzwang so that's that's incredible uh foresight so uh to lock down the moves here so we have g takes f5 yeah so h5 is weak now rook takes f5 protecting g5 tactically now we have queen e6 if rook takes g5 this is punished with check and then bishop g7 check taking here scooping up winning make next move after queen f8 queen takes okay so we have queen e6 and the king comes up to h4 totally outrageous is there going to be a pawn for the exchange now but also this is its own pawn island poor little pawn in f7 its own single pawn island so this bishop is just so powerful on these dark squares we have uh rook e7 queen d5 white is volunteering the end games now rook g6 black dare not take look at this ending here white scoops up that pawn and we'll just come back and eventually play things like f4 and e5 it's without prospects really for black rook g6 king takes h5 outrageous the king is attacking an attacking piece as Steinitz said maybe he, he was he was seeing the future where the king can be an attacking piece under great exchange sack conditions remarkable when the rooks are not doing anything rook e8 bishop f6 cutting out connections now between the black pieces queen d7 king g4 rook c8 queen c6 again volunteering simplification now forcing the queens off just taking the queen off rook d5 looking forward to things like f4 and e5 rook takes f6 in total desperation if this counter sack doesn't happen here for example in fact doesn't even need f4 e5 immediately 
taking and now c5 is huge in this position this strategic break is squishy for black because of a rook coming to the southern flank and then there's potential with the dark square bishop to scoop up all of these pawns which unfortunately all on dark squares ready to be munched for dinner by that bishop soon after bishop e5 for example that way is a more convenient way in this particular situation so the bishop is going to be with a full belly there of pawns uh, in that variation so that explains why this bishop's eliminated g takes <laughs> king d7 king f5 c6 this is uh pretty bad news c6 if rook h8 instead f4 rook, rook h6 e5 this is very strong position white is eventually making progress eventually able to break through and now just get a rook to g7 is the winning method basically that'll be the winning method crush crashing through so uh c6 b takes and now king takes was played you know getting out of the way of uh, e5 possibilities but f4 anyway now to renew e5 rook h8 and e5 and this is the end of the game position it's adjudicated as a win for white even just the pawn up here this is a really crushing position in this rook and pawn ending not all rook and pawn endings are drawn if the game continued then for example d takes f takes check king g4 rook h1 rook d8 and we're coming for that f7 pawn basically the king's going to come around for that f7 soon or even e6 just crashing through with f7 so for example f7 crashing through totally winning there so another fantastic game pure exchange sack just with a tiny bit of prospect here showing that maybe we should be a bit more dynamic in our human chess about how we indulge exchange sacrifices but evidently i mean visually it looks as though the rooks had no prospects so i'm sure shut some gms like Toplov, he's the master of ex positional exchange sacrifices i'm sure he would have definitely considered such an exchange sacrifice he loves them the master of positional exchange sacrifices it was very topolovian game which i hope you thoroughly enjoyed as much as me please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member of chessworld.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check youtube analysis in advance of these games or updated analysis from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the no notification bell all appreciated and also there's a new teespring t-shirt store which is in the description okay thanks very much